When I tell people that I write a blog on skincare, the number one question that I receive is, what are your thoughts on hyaluronic acid? And I think this is because, first off, it sounds fancy. But second, if you just look around in the world of skincare marketing, you will see everybody advertising hyaluronic acid as a cure-all ingredient. It's gonna plump up your skin, it's gonna get rid of wrinkles, it's gonna get rid of inflammation, redness, itching, dryness, you name it. People say hyaluronic acid is gonna fix it. And largely, that's kind of true. But I would say, if anyone tells you that there's a skincare ingredient that is going to cause all of your problems to go away, take a step back. There is no cure-all skincare ingredient. There are a lot of good ones, and yeah, I would say hyaluronic acid is definitely one of the good ones, but there are downsides to every ingredient. So before you jump off into the deep end of a single skincare ingredient and put in all your products, you should really do some research to say, hey, maybe this isn't for me. So when I tell people that I don't put hyaluronic acid on my skin, a lot of people are shocked especially skincare enthusiasts, I mean, that is sacrilegious to say to most people who love skincare. And some people honestly can get pretty angry when you make claims like this. But I'm gonna explain why I don't think everyone should use hyaluronic acid. And hopefully at the end, you will be more informed and be able to make a decision of whether or not this is something that you want in your skincare routine. So let's get going. Let's start off by defining what hyaluronic acid is for those of us who don't know, because I think that there's a lot of lacking information. A lot of people are ready to put something on their skin without even knowing what it is. So hyaluronic acid is a substance that actually is found naturally in the human body. It's used to lubricate our joints and it's used to plump up our skin. It holds on to a thousand times its weight in water, which is where it gets all those claims to be able to hydrate your skin so efficiently. This is because when you apply it topically, it tracks the water out of the air and pulls it into your skin to create a plumpness, a vibrancy, and a youthful glow to the skin that's common with really any hydrating product. To dive a little deeper in, there are three main types of hyaluronic acid that you should probably know about. The most commonly referred to form of hyaluronic acid is high molecular weight hyaluronic acid. This is how hyaluronic acid occurs in its natural form. What it means by high molecular weight is that the molecules are large. This means that they cannot really permeate into the deeper layers of your skin where they naturally occur, which kind of renders these products more or less useless. They aren't able to get that hydration deep into the sub layers of your skin where they can lift wrinkles and cause internal changes. Then there's the cheaper hyaluronic acid ingredient known as sodium hyaluronate. This is probably the most common form you'll see in skincare formulation. If you flip around a package and you see sodium hyaluronate written, that's basically the same as hyaluronic acid. And I would really pair that either with a high molecular weight to a medium molecular weight, just meaning a slightly smaller molecule that may be able to permeate a little bit deeper than the high molecular weight. Then, once people started realizing that the higher weights of molecular um, hyaluronic acid were not able to penetrate deep into the skin, they found out that they could chop up the high molecular weight hyaluronic acid into low molecular weight. These are really small nano-sized particles of hyaluronic acid that are very efficient in going deep into your skin, bringing water and causing a really plump hydration. They're extremely effective and have made their way into higher end skincare products. Now when I say I don't use hyaluronic acid in skincare, what I really mean is I do not use low molecular weight hyaluronic acid, the small size that permeates deeply. But why? Because after all that's the one that really works. Well, yes it becomes complicated because the low molecular weight hyaluronic acid has actually been shown to be quite inflammatory deep in the skin. So the exact mechanism of this is not entirely understood, 
but it's generally believed that when our skin is damaged, so let's imagine you get cut at the site of the wound, your body starts breaking down its naturally occurring high molecular weight, so the large particles of hyaluronic acid, into low molecular weight. When our body sees that there's amounts of low molecular weight, the small particles, in our wound, it creates a pro-inflammatory response, meaning that our immune system kicks in, it creates inflammation at the site of the wound and begins the healing process. Once the wound begins to heal, the hyaluronic acid starts converting back into high molecular weight. With high molecular weight, it tells the body that the wound is healing or healed and that it does not need to have any sort of inflammatory response anymore. Thus, it's anti-inflammatory. So while it's important to have the low molecular weight hyaluronic acid to tell our body that we have a wound, when we start applying that topically, our body is signaled the same thing. It thinks that there are low levels of abrasions all over your face and it starts to cause inflammation. For some people, it's not noticeable and it probably won't ever cause a problem, but for others, this can cause redness, general inflammation, in some cases acne, but it can also cause micro scarring. Part of the healing process in a human body is to create scar tissue. This is what the low molecular weight hyaluronic acid induces in wounds. It tells our body to start turning our wound into scar tissue to heal. But when you have a chronic exposure to this low molecular weight hyaluronic acid, our body can start to create scar tissue in otherwise healthy tissue around our face. So it could be actually quite damaging to our skin. But it's for these reasons that I just stay away from products with low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. I know it can be really confusing for many people to read product labels or know, hey, this says it has hyaluronic acid, how can I tell if it's high molecular weight, sodium hyaluronate, medium molecular weight, or low molecular weight? And yeah, it's confusing and it's unfortunately, you just have to learn how. Luckily, I've linked my blog post down below where I explain how to do this. I talk about some alternatives if you're just not comfortable with this or give you the tools to say, hey, I think that I'm okay. I've never had any issues. Um, I'm gonna keep using these products because they work for my skin, which is always a respectable option as long as you know what you're doing. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out that blog post. I'll link it below on preserveskincare.com.